Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and we're continuing with our series of instructional videos helping you play chess better here on YouTube. In today's video, I thought I'd do something I hadn't done in a couple years, <clears throat> which is to play what I call the 20-minute exercise. A lot of people play these 10 and 15-minute games online, and they think that's, you know, a long game. But actually, if you're going to try to get international titles and so on, you have to play slow tournament games. And to do so, you have to learn how to visualize when you analyze and things like that. So the purpose of a 20-minute exercise is to force you to think for 20 minutes on a move, whether you like it or not. And of course, you wouldn't do this in a real game. So what we do is we pick out kind of a random position that we've never seen and try to think about it for 20 minutes and learn everything that we can, visualizing as much as we can, learning as much as we can. And when we're done, we can compare it to what the grandmasters did or what the computer says. So for today's video, we need to pick out a game. And I, I listed uh, the recent games on the Internet Chess Club's uh, library list for Dortmund 19. And I didn't see most of these games. Uh, so we want to pick out a game and a move number. Uh, I didn't look and see which game was which. And I may have seen one or two of these games. Uh, so hopefully I'll pick one that I didn't. But if I did, I'll quickly switch. But uh, let's pick eight just because my birthday was this month on the 8th, July 8th. And let's pick the eighth game. And then we need a color and a move number. So let's pick white's, I don't know, 23rd move. So believe me, I have no idea which game this is. And I have no idea what this is. Now, if we pick a move that's like a recapture and there's only one move, well, then we'll go to the next move. Because if you're going to think for 20 minutes, there's got to at least be something there. We don't want it to be a forced move. All right, game eight is Rajabhav Rapport. So let's pull that up so we can show it on the video. Examine. Dortmund, 19% 8. All right, there's the game. Let's line up the board so it looks like a nice video here. Okay, we'll make it bigger. All right, that should be taking up the entire video screen now. Something like that. All right, so we talked about, what did I say? White's 23rd move. All right, so... Let's play over the first 22 moves fairly quickly. D4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, b6, queen's Indian, <coughs> g3, bishop b7, bishop g2, bishop e7, knight c3, knight e4, queen c2, knight takes, queen takes, castle, castle, c5, rook d1, bishop f6, queen b3, C takes D, knight takes D4, bishop takes G2, king takes G2, queen E7, knight back to F3, D6, bishop F4, E5, bishop E3, knight C6, queen A6, rook F D8, knight D2, E4, rook A C1, rook A C8, knight B3, queen to E6, that's black's 20th, knight D4, bishop takes D4, Bishop takes d4, knight back. Okay, so here we are. We're on white's 23rd move. I haven't seen this game before. <clears throat> so let's see what we can learn about this position. So let's look at the time on the clock, uh, not on the game clock, but on the uh, video clock. It's 3.40 or so. So we want to keep going to about 23.40. Uh, you know, on a 20 minute exercise, you don't have to be exactly 20 minutes, but so first, let's count the material. Both sides have uh, a piece, two rooks, a queen, and seven pawns. So that's roughly even. Uh, white has a bishop. Black has a knight. Um, both sides have two pawn islands. Nobody's got any past pawns. Um, so it's kind of interesting if we look at that black d pawn. The black d pawn is kind of artificially isolated. Um, it can't be guarded by a pawn. And unless black can play d5, it's a little bit backward. Now, black has a knight, a queen, and a rook, all supporting the move d5. So it may be possible that if we don't do anything, let's say we play king to g1 or something, that black can play d5 and try to get rid of that weak pawn. The pawn on e4 is not so weak, because if white starts piling up on that with like queen to e3, Besides the fact that black could play knight f5, forking the queen and the bishop, black can just play f5, guarding the pawn. 
All right, now notice that pawn on a7 is hanging. So one of the big questions when something's hanging that is not guarded, attacked but not guarded, is can we take it off? Is queen takes a7 a move? So that's something we're going to have to look at also. One of the things you want to do before you start analyzing is get a lay of the land. What are all the checks, captures, and threats that everybody has? For instance, can black play queen to g4 and pushes h pawn? Is knight f5 a threat? Is black threatening the pawn on c4? He's got a rook and a queen attacking c4. White only has a rook guarding it. So these are kind of all the issues. So two of the squares we're really interested in are a7 and c4. They're both inadequately guarded. a7 is not guarded at all. c4 is inadequately guarded. It's got two attackers and one defender. OK. So if white does nothing, black can probably just play rook takes c4, if nothing else. All right, let's take a look at some candidate ideas here. Um, let's say white decides he doesn't want to lose the c-pawn. What are all the moves that would save the c-pawn? Well, there is uh, queen to a6, queen to a4, queen to b4, queen to b3, queen to c3. Is that it? Uh, and b3, of course. And of those, the least committal is to play b3, because if we play b3, then we get a pawn guarding that pawn, and the rook on c1 doesn't even have to do it. So b3 becomes a candidate move. All right. Um, what else can white do besides take the a7 pawn or guard the c4 pawn? Um, can he make a move that stops black from playing d5? Bishop takes g7. Doesn't look like it does anything. White could play queen to c3, hitting the pawn on g7. I guess that's possible. If white plays queen to c3, black can't take the c4 pawn, but he could play a move like knight f5, which simultaneously guards g7 while hitting the bishop on d4, and the bishop on d4 has no safe squares to go to where he won't be traded off for the bishop. So queen c3, knight f5, white could play b3, then maybe knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and that d6 pawn is a little weak. So that's possible, but after queen c3, knight f5, b3, black could play a better move, maybe like d5 or b5, and that pawn on c4 is pinned to the queen, which is a little bit awkward. So queen to c3, knight to f5, b3, doesn't seem to be the right idea. Um, White could play h3 and g4 to stop the knight from getting to f5, but that's awful slow. That's not going to probably help us play queen c3. So you know, and, and even if black didn't have knight f5, he could always play a move like, you know, f6 to, to save his g-pawn. So queen c3 is a move. Not so sure it should be near the top of our list. All right, it's about time we looked at queen takes a7. Queen takes a7. Black can just take on c4. He could play rook takes c4. Then the pawn on b6 is also loose. So queen takes a7, rook takes c4, queen takes b6, hits the rook on d8. Um, interesting. All right, let's look at some other lines. Uh, queen takes a7, black can play knight c6, forking the bishop and the queen, but white always has something like queen to b6 anyway, and if rook to b8, and he moves the queen, knight takes d4, he can always take back with the rook, rook takes d4. Then maybe black has e3, but. So we're looking at queen takes a7. Queen takes a7. Um, if rook a8, queen takes b6, he can't play rook takes a2 because queen takes d8. So queen takes a7, rook a8, queen takes b6, rook on d to b8. Now where does the white queen go? Um, his only safe square is c7. And can black attack that queen forever with the rooks? Rook to c8. Queen 
to b6, rook to b8. So it looks like that's a draw. Queen takes a7, rook to a8, queen takes b6, rook on f to b8, queen to c7, rook to c8, queen to b6 or b7, doesn't matter, queen to b7, rook on f to, to b8, we can't play queen d5, the knight's guarding it, we can't play queen c6, the knight's guarding it. So at the very least, black gets a draw on queen a7. I guess if we wanted to give him a draw, we could play queen takes a7 as kind of a draw offer. But, you know, I think white feels like, you know, he still has a m small advantage here. So I doubt Rajabov is going to give Rapport a draw by letting him attack the queen forever. Um, trying to look at different move orders. Queen takes a7, rook a8, queen c7, rook fc8, queen b6, rook f b8 transposes to that draw. Um, well, suppose white just plays b3. He's still not threatening to take the pawn on a7 because after b3, queen takes a7 is still a draw. Is there a move that white could play that would remove the draw? Could he play a move with the bishop so that when he takes on e6, he can play his queen back to d4? Well, the problem is if he, white moves the bishop now, like bishop c3 or bishop e3, black can always start with rook takes c4. And it's highly doubtful that white's winning a pawn in that kind of line because black's up a pawn first. So bishop e3 puts more pressure on the d6 pawn. Bishop c3 unguards the c4 pawn. Hmm. Doesn't look like uh, either of those. Now, if this was a real game, and Rajabov didn't have to think for 20 minutes, of course, we could ask ourselves the question, how long would Rajabov think in a, in a game where he has 38 minutes left to make like 18 moves with a 30 second time increment in this kind of position he probably wouldn't think more than you know four minutes or so I would guess on this kind of move it's just not that critical he would probably decide to play a move like b3 or maybe even queen to c3 and just keep his options open you know when you play chess you don't you don't think for 20 minutes on each move. But this is our 20-minute exercise video. So we're going to keep going and see what we can find here. Um, if white's not careful, black can play knight f5 followed by e3 and kind of blast open the king a little bit. So white does have to look at that. If he wanted to stop those kind of things, he could play e3. But then later when black plays queen g4, he's threatening queen f3 check. And then the knight can come up and help the queen. So that can get a little tricky if you weaken that f3 square. So I'm not in any big hurry to play e3 here. Um, so besides queen c3 and b3, what other moves that guard the, the c4 pawn would be worth considering? Queen a4, queen a6 don't do very much. Queen b3 seems like kind of a negative move, although it does put pressure on the d pawn that make it harder to move up to d5. Um, so queen b3 isn't, isn't completely ridiculous, but, uh, all right. Could we double our rooks? Suppose we play rook to c2 and he plays rook takes c4. What was the point of moving the rook if I'm going to have to take his rook anyway? Um, rook c2, rook takes c4, rook takes c4, queen takes c4, queen takes a7. I'm not sure that white's all that happy trying to get his pawn back that way. Black can take the pawn on e2 in some lines. Yeah, that's getting a little annoying. Um, okay. Um, we pretty much established queen a7 is at least a draw for black. Um, let's go back and look at queen c3 again. Queen c3. Suppose black plays knight f5 to guard g7. Does white have any good follow-up 
that would make it hard for black to play b5 or d5. Knight e3, he could always play b5. Bishop e3. So we're looking at queen c3, knight f5, bishop e3, b5. Or maybe just knight takes e3, check, queen takes e3, rook takes c4, or knight takes e3, check, f takes e3, and white has doubled isolated pawns for no reason. I just don't like any of those lines. Um, so queen to a4, what's the point? Queen to a4. Black could, if black doesn't want to lose the a pawn, he doesn't want to give up a draw, he could play rook to c7, double his rooks on the pawn. You know, at some point, it looks like white's going to have to play b3. Can he, can he move his bishop, give up the c pawn, and get his queen out? All right, let's look at bishop c3. Bishop c3. If black plays rook takes c4, then queen takes a7. Might be okay for white. But black has also moves like e3, which are a little annoying. Every time we play bishop c3, e3 becomes a, a positional threat. Um, I really can't see myself doing that. How about bishop to e3? Bishop to e3, knight to f5, queen takes a7. Knight takes e3 check, f takes e3. Black has a pleasant choice. He could start attacking the queen again, although the queen now has the d4 square to come back. The knight didn't have to take the bishop. Bishop e3, knight f5, queen takes a7, rook a8, queen b7, rook f b8, queen takes b6, sorry, queen c7, rook f, rook to c8, queen takes b6, rook c to b8, and since the knight on f5 has not taken the bishop on e3, the queen cannot go to d4, so it's a draw again, at least for black. I don't like those ideas either, but we're going to take 20 minutes whether we like it or not. I don't think there's 20 minutes worth of stuff here, but let's see what else we can figure out. Um, let's say we play b3, and let's say black goes for a break move. Let's say he plays d5. Let's see how good that is for white. b3, d5. The knight on e7 is guarded. Um, I don't think the queen is overworked. b3, d5. White's going to have trouble guarding that pawn, so let's say he takes it. c takes d5. Now can black play rook takes c1, queen takes c1, queen takes d5, bishop takes g7? Not, not clear. b3, d5. C takes D. Now, of course, black can just play knight takes D5. And I think black's pretty happy there. Um, in some lines, he's going to play E3 because the knight's now on D5 is now guarding E3, and the queen on A3 is no longer guarding it. Hmm. But what could white do? Oh, people watching the video are like, what'd you do, Dan? And the answer is, oh, <laughs> I didn't update my screen enough and it went blank there. That doesn't make for good YouTube videos is blank screens. All right. Well, if I knew how to edit on my uh, video maker, I could go in and edit out the blackness there, but I uh, haven't quite figured that out yet. Maybe on future videos I'll figure out how to do that kind of editing. Okay. Anyway, we're back to um, looking at our position. So on b3, d5, I don't think black has any big problems. Can white play another move that gives black more problems? You know, I'm starting to think the white's no better than equal here. The bishop on d4 is a good bishop, but when the knight gets to f5, it's a pretty good knight, and it starts to re really restrict that bishop. And if the bishop goes to c3 and blocks the rook from guarding the c4 pawn, that means you pretty much have to play b3. And b3 doesn't seem to give white much after black plays a move like d5 because now he has to trade off that pawn anyway. Can he push the pawn after d5? Let's take a look at that. b3, d5, c5. All right, white's got it guarded by a bishop and a queen. Black has it attacked by a rook and a pawn. So if pawn takes, then bishop takes. 
hits the knight on e7 and the pawn on a7. But black can just play either knight c6 or knight f5. Knight c6 guards the a pawn. White can't play. Bishop takes a7. Goes probably rook a8. Although in that line, yeah, yeah, you, you can't trade rooks on the d file because there's a black pawn on d5. So we're looking at b3, d5, c5, b takes c5, bishop takes c5, knight c6, and I don't see anything great there for white. White has a two-on-one majority on the outside, but black center is very strong, and his knight on c6 is guarding that d4 square, meaning that black's threatening to push that pawn to d4 in some lines. So after b3, d5, c5, I'm not at all convinced that that's very good for white. b3, d5, c takes d5, knight takes d5, rook takes c8, rook takes c8. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see that that really gets white anywhere. Um, b3, d5, c takes d5, knight takes d5. I guess rook takes c8, rook takes c8, queen takes a7 is then possible. I guess it is. b3, d5, c takes d. If he plays rook takes c1 first, rook takes c1, and then he plays rook takes d5, hitting the bishop. That may be okay for black. Uh, queen takes a7. Let's look at that line again. b3, d5, c takes d5, rook takes c1, rook takes c1, rook takes d5, queen takes a7, and now rook takes d4 is impossible because queen to a8 or queen to b8, and... <clears throat> black cannot defend because the rook on c1 is guarding c8. If he puts the knight on c8, rook takes c8 leads to mate. If he puts the queen on c8, rook takes c8 leads to mate. So it might not be quite that easy for black. Of course, he has, doesn't have to do any of this. b3, he doesn't have to play d5. But c takes d5, rook takes c1, rook takes c1. I think he would play knight takes d5 and leave the rook on the back rank. It looks like rook takes d5 hitting the bishop, allowing queen takes a7 is not necessary. So after b3, d5, I think black's doing okay. Queen takes a7 as a draw. Queen c3, knight f5 is probably equal. White can just play, you know, he could play bishop e3, he could play b3, he could play b4. I don't think white's in any trouble here, but I don't see that white's got any kind of big advantage. If you ask me what the computer's advantage is going to be in this position, I would say it's going to give maybe white a tenth of a pawn or something like that. And boy, I've been awfully wrong on some of these guesses when it's the end of the video. And speaking of the end of the video, we're getting close. All right, so what move would I play here? I don't think I would play queen takes a7 and offer a draw, although if I was playing rapport instead of Rajabov, <laughs> given how low I am compared in rating, that's a pretty good result to, grand, to draw with Grandmaster Rapport. I might play queen a7 and say, show me that you got something more than a draw, but that's not how Grandmaster Rajabov is going to play the position. So my guess is he probably just played b3, and said, okay, I'm probably at least equal here. I don't think he played e3. I don't think he played queen c3. b3 is the most logical move, but it's not the only move in the position. All right, we've spent our 20 minutes. Let's see what Rajabov played. He did take the pawn. So let's see if uh, I miscalculated or whether rapport forces a draw here. Rook a8, queen b6, rook b8, queen c7, rook c8, queen b6. Rook b8, queen c7, rook c8, queen b6, and they agreed to a draw. Well, I guess I calculated that right. But that means that Rajabov thought that he wasn't better, that if he tried to play like a, a normal line, that he wasn't better. Now, maybe he and Rapport 
both wanted a draw anyway. We don't, we don't know those kind of things. But let's go back to our position now. All right. Let's ask the computer, and I'll, I'll move it up into the screen so you can see it. What's the top three moves here for Stockfish? Stockfish says, Dan, your B3 move is right up there with number one. Your other idea about playing H3 first with maybe the idea of playing G4 and keeping the knight out of F5. H3 is not a bad idea. It just moved to number one. And just moving that bishop back and blockading that pawn, bishop E3. So those look like the top three. It looks like H3 and B3 are fighting for number one, but B3 just dropped down to 0, 0, 0. And H3 and bishop E3, and now it's dropping that. Remember I said I thought white was maybe better by a tenth of a pawn? Well, at first Stockfish thought that was true, but now Stockfish is saying that bishop E3 is 0, H3 is 0, queen A7, of course, is 0. So Rajabov figured I don't have any advantage, let's just force the draw. And he played queen takes a7. Well, I got to give myself fairly high marks then because my evaluation was not far off. My analysis of the most was pretty good. So this is the 20-minute exercise. So if you're used to playing 15-minute games on your videos and you don't know how to analyze and you never play two-hour games where you have time but you want to learn how to visualize, you want to learn how to, to get things out of the position, you can try this 20-minute exercise and just find some random position. Don't, don't use puzzles where there's certain answers. You want to take just kind of random positions where you'd have no idea what the best move is. Um, and think about it for 20 minutes and then see what you come up with. Compare it to what the Grandmaster did. Compare it to what the computer says and see how you did. So this today's video actually worked out pretty well. All right, hopefully you can see how these kind of things in the long run are going to help your game for my YouTube channel. Dan Heisman Chess. Hopefully, if you enjoyed it, you can subscribe. I'm hoping to put in a few videos each week to add new content, at least till I get so much content that people probably haven't seen all the content. But there's a lot of things we can do, a lot of fun exercises like this one that we haven't done, the 20-minute exercise, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.